Hello, hello, everybody. It is 2.04 p.m. Central Time on the 26th of October, 2020. It's Monday here in the United States. Hope you are doing well again and again. We are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream to talk about seismic events. And if you caught my update yesterday talking about the electrical grid and the earthquakes popping off next to all of our high voltage, high tension transmission power lines, that is just phenomenal. And we're still watching that. I'm going to be paying attention, attention to that over the next several weeks and months to come as we watch and see if that plays out even further. Let's get a display capture turned on and you can see what I see. We're going to start over here in the West Pacific where a day ago we had a 5.9 earthquake. Let's just call it a 6 right next to our deep 6 that is raised high off the globe here. You can see it easily, the deep earthquake, very big. And that's hammering in on the underside of the plate. What I think is going on underneath the plate is something like this down in the magma where concentric waves are focusing in on each other and form a singularity or a spike that comes in out of the magma. And I think that's happening actually with very low frequency down in the magma itself. Could even be induced from plasma, which would explain how we're getting earthquakes coming up, for instance, next to power lines. But over a world away, down below the Pacific plate, we have a hammering action coming in here. Spreading out and away from this point, we have significant sized earthquakes, all about the same size. So let's just look at the 4.0. Here's the 5.0 and greater, or 4.9 and greater. What you'll see are two sets of 5.2s spreading out over to the west and then taking a step down to a 4.9. So 5.2, 5.2, 4.9. Next to the deep 6, we have a shallow 6, or 5.9. Then look, a 5.2 spread down to our letter X on our fracture zone to the southeast. Pretty interesting, isn't it? 5.2 in one direction, 5.2 in the other, spreading out and away following this under sea mount and fracture zone that goes back up to where the deep earthquakes came hammering in on the underside of the plate. So it's 5.2s in both directions in the last day, spreading out from where our deep earthquake is. Now let's go and look at the rest of the activity that spread over to the west. So in the last day, going over to the west, we have 5.3 to 5.4 earthquake strike yesterday at Java. Further to the west, we have 4.0 range that went over to the tip of Sumatra and going up to the north, up through Indonesia, for instance, we have a 4.8 and to accompany that, we have a 5.1 to 5.2. So wait, 5.2? 5.2, and this started out at 5.2, it's now 5.1. It's all the same size movement in the last day, like I said so many times before, spreading out across the plates. Up to the north, th same thing going on. 4.7, 4.6 from a day ago, and a 4.5 striking right next to Suwanese Ajima Volcano, south of Japan in the Ryukyu Islands. Suwanese Ajima started to erupt. Now why does a 4.5 matter? Well, Yesterday, a 4.5 struck right here, right next to it. Now, I need to show it to you on the USGS plate boundary map. It'll make a little bit more sense. This letter H-shaped bend in the plate here is what just got struck, but on both sides, 4.7s, 4.6s, 4.5s, equaling out on both sides of the plate. Up to the north, a new deeper earthquake struck down below west of Hokkaido, and I guess that's technically still Japan's waters, and it's down at 262 kilometers deep. That means we need to watch for a shallower, larger earthquake, at least a magnitude larger, somewhere in that magnitude larger range, going up into the 5 range at least, and we look between our sets of current earthquakes, which puts it right here on the coast of Honshu. can expect the coast of Honshu to get hit, as well as to the north, this middle point here in the Kuril Islands should also get something in the 5.2 range. Wow, that's a lot of 5.2s, wouldn't you say? Over to the west, we go into China, and we only have that 4.7 from two days ago in central China. But look, right here at the border, 4.6, 4.4, 4.2, all in a cluster going from our letter D down into Pakistan. And if we take the 4.6 plus the 4.4, we get 4.74. Adding in another 4.2, we get 4.89.
So in other words, a 4.9's worth of energy here pooling up and all we have to do is go back a few days in China. Look at this. A 5.1 and some other 4's. But 5.1 took a step down to 4.9 coming out of China. The Caspian Sea was hit yesterday and the Caspian Sea was hit again today. This is the Caspian Sea, 4.0. But everybody, especially over in Europe, I should say, everybody over in Europe talking about the 4.0 earthquake that struck up here right at Switzerland. 4.6, 4.5. And there's a lot of talk about CERN. That's not from me with CERN. It's an entirely different animal to talk about. Well, <laughs> but it's down in the ground and it's definitely using radio waves, high-powered microwaves. And it's going into the well, multiple trillions of watts and they pump that up with klystrons. That's how they get that extreme power. So they'll take a few million watts, put it through a series of klystrons that basically power up the power. Basically microwave up the power, actually. And they put them into banks in series and in parallel, and then they take a few million watts and turn it into hundreds of trillions of watts. It's crazy. And then they use that to power the beams, the high-powered microwave beams, the two sets of beams that collide One's going one way, one goes the other. They'll strip particles off, put them into the beams of microwaves, target them through the magnetic bands inside of the tubes that they're using, and collide them. And where they collide, the particles collide, and they burst apart. They keep track of that. That's called a scalar, by the way. The scalar Higgs boson experiment at CERN. Look it up, scalar Higgs boson. Now, going across the North Pacific, we have 4.5, 4.4, 4.0 and 4.1 going across. Or is that right? 4.1? Hold on. Yeah. And it's spread across the plate boundary, but it's going down to both land masses, and it's making like a U-shape here. And we need to go look at the USGS map here. Look at that. So it's mimicking the spot on the inside edge of the plate all the way from Russia over into Alaska across the Bering Strait. And that follows our 7.5 earthquake that struck here along with Tsunami. That was just this past week. It might even still be on the feed here. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Let's get all the other smaller earthquakes out of there. There's our oh, 7.6. Sorry, they upgraded the earthquake. That's rare. Very rare for them to upgrade a big earthquake. And there it is. So a spread of the same sized earthquakes. Fours going across the plate boundary, going up into Canada. And in Canada, we talked about that yesterday. The 4.7 that struck up in the Northern Territories. But again, even the untrained eye should be able to see that this spread of U-shaped fours going across the plate boundary on the inside and right on it goes right into North America. And there's then an open area across Canada right here. And the open area is minus noteworthy earthquakes. There was a four here this past week that the USGS completely ignored. The Canadian agency and Europeans reported it, it was right here. Then that 7.5 earthquake struck. But there's something else going on up here in the Pacific Northwest. A slow slip has been taking place on the plate from Washington, Oregon, and California going up into Vancouver Island. And there's been thousands of small little tremors taking place as the plate has been shifting. Let's go take a look. There's 230 on the map for yesterday for the 25th. This is always running about a day behind. But the predominance of the tremors are now taking place in Northern California. Get a sip of my coffee. Northern California. Okay. I mean, come on. So we have shifted now down into California. But why? Well, we have to go back a couple days. Let's just go back like two or three days. Let's go back to like 22nd here, four days ago. Well, do you see this? We're in southwest Washington, northwest Oregon, and in California on the 22nd now. But let's move forward to the 23rd. Well, you add in Southwest Oregon, Northwest Oregon, and in Southwest Washington, as well as California, go to the 24th, and it's three spots we shift out of Oregon, and then we get into the 25th, and it's focused down in California. So it's going to the south. Do you see that? Again, let's, we can even go back further. We can go back to like the 20, let's go back to the 15th. We're up north, Vancouver Island and Washington. And professionals announced that this all slipped, Vancouver Island, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California, four to six millimeters, which is one-tenth of an inch, in a week last week. 
when this was happening. All these little red dots, four to six millimeters shifted out towards the ocean, one tenth of an inch in a week. That's pretty big plate wise for such a short time for a week. So Vancouver, again, going down into Washington. Then it starts to develop in Oregon by the 17th. Going into the 18th, shifts back to the north. Going to the 19th, shifts back to the south. You see how it's teetering back and forth between the north and south? Then it spreads. Starting on the 20th, it starts to spread down into California. Carried on, 21st. Stays in California. 22nd, starts to develop out more in California. 23rd really starts to develop out in California, spreading, I should say, and then Southwest Oregon again. 24th, two days ago, pretty much stays doing the same thing. 25th, here we are yesterday, it's down in California. What's down in California? Let's go show you the spot where it's shifting. Right here, across Northern California. Well, wait a second, look where it corresponds to. This is the Juan de Fuca fracture zone out in the ocean. And the spots that are shifting are on land here, 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 and all the way up across into Vancouver Island in the whole state of Washington. Well, that corresponds with every pinnacle point on the Juan de Fuca fracture zone, including the axial seamount. And that's a volcano out there that erupted in 2015 on the axial seamount. But each pinnacle point of this points into where all the shifting, shimmying, shaking of the tremoring is taking place. So these do have magnitudes assigned to these, but they're not really earthquakes. They're vibrations as the plate is shifting in pockets or asperities that are down below the plate, little open areas that are moving and shifting that moves faster. So scraping side by side, then we have a pocket that starts to move. And that takes us into the tremors. Again, the tremors that have been happening. Now, right up here in the middle of this area, east of Haida Gwaii, all of this, all the way over into Alberta, guys, this has all been hot spotting out with hot spots next to volcanoes and volcanic fields up here in Canada. And I showed that in yesterday's update. Here's the Hecate Strait. Here's Haida Gwaii. And the hotspot starting down by Millbank Sound Group, marked by the Smithsonian Volcanic Group, going across this whole area east of the TCX, I'm probably butchering the way that said, River Cone Volcanic Field, and going over to all the oil pumping operations over here along the border. And there are a boatload of oil and gas pumping operations all the way across here. Every one of these little pads in the ground here is a different, well, it's grainy. You can't see it. Let's see if I can get a better picture. Better picture on the pads, tanks there. Even that one's grainy. Dang. Okay, well, you guys can look it up. If you want to go look it up, they are these little square pads that are spread out all the way across here. Every one of these little pads is connected with a pipeline and so forth oil and gas, mainly oil. And that's actually a small pumping operation there. They get much bigger as we go down to the east by southeast. So for instance, we can get out here again. There's more. These, all of these. And again, you might be able to make out the shadow on some of those jacks or pumps. But no earthquakes reported in there. And you know what? We could go look today to go see if there's any additional new hotspots showing up up to the northwest up in Canada. For instance, maybe I might be able to still show you the hotspots from a few days ago. It might still be on the live feed here. Here's Haida Gwaii. And we're starting just south of Haida Gwaii and going in a line up to the border out of British Columbia. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're going to see them. There's a couple that you can still see visible over here. Little black dots. But the cloud cover from last night's covering that up. You're not going to really see much. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we're just not going to see that. That's fine. Going down into Washington, at this point, I'd like to turn on the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes. 0.0, .0 and greater. So we'll look at it again, everything 0.0, .0 and greater. And here's 24. We'll start over here on the West Coast and start up in Washington State. So yesterday when I did my update, I zoomed in on this 0.9 up here, directly next to high voltage power lines and a power generation station. Now since then, we've had a new 1.1 down here at Ashford, Washington. This is on the side of a volcano. 
I don't know of any power lines on the side of this volcano. So it's just proof that there may or may not be power lines at each location. So we have to check. Of course, we don't have any power lines here. We're at the top of the crater or right below the crater for Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier. And there are no power lines there. Just small earthquakes striking there. And look, we have a hot spot right next to it. Hold on. We do have a hot spot here. Hotspot detected by GOES satellite, but no fire temperature assigned to that. So that's going to be somewhere under a fire temperature, but higher than normal. Could be steam, could be volcanism, could be some kind of heat signature popping up. Could be. It's the only hotspot detected around the area in the entire region. So it's just a little weird. We have an earthquake right there, wouldn't you say? What about up to the north? This 2.3, I think we looked that one up. Maybe we didn't. Swede Heaven. Swede Heaven. That is weird. Wow. I just watched a show last night with a Swedish person in it named Gretel. That's kind of ironic. It's not every day you hear about Sweden. You know what I mean? Okay, so here we are. We're at a place called actually Concrete and Rock Port. Skagit County and the earthquake epicenter bringing us in right next to Mount Higgins. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that mountain peak name. Round Mountain. Now we're just north of Three Fingers South. Darrington, Three Fingers South. That is right next to the volcano. That's up to the north. So Mount Rainier over here next to the power lines and up to the north, that's some questionable. What's questionable about it? Well, the volcanoes next to it. That's the question I'm asking to myself. Are they related when they're right next to the volcano? I think they are. I mean, if we think volcanoes can cause seismic activity, that is. There's some professionals who think that volcanoes don't induce seismic activity around them. Okay. Here we are in Longview. And we're just west of Mount St. Helens, but we're in downtown Longview. Is this some kind of blast or something? 26 kilometer depth. No, it's down below the location. What do we have here? What is at this location? Well, a road, obviously. And uh, looks like lumber yards, an industrial park, a pond. You know what? Just looking at the location, it's right in the middle of the town. Where's the power generation for this town? Are we coming in on some kind of electrical substation? Again, this is right in the middle of the town, right below it. So I don't know what's there. It's all a mystery to me. We'll have to look around and see if we find anything. But again, I'm zooming in on the spot and I just see we're right in the center of the town. Makes you wonder. Ferguson. Interesting. That's interesting for that to come up. You guys know I'm from Ferguson, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I am. That's that's crazy, too. Water treatment facility here. Wait, what's this? Some kind of refinery. That's what it looks like, at least. So we have a refinery there. Usually, we have power generation next to these things. This to me looks like another quarry of some kind, another distillation pond. Well, you got to look this up real time. That's the way you find the, anything, guys. You don't just accept it at face value that it's just... Hey, hey, by the way, if I hear one more person start to say anything's a coincidence, dude, you're out. Everything that I've ever discovered for the last 10 years, even fracking earthquakes at the fracking locations was all said to be a coincidence. They said harp rings was a coincidence. They said earthquake forecasting was a coincidence. They said the earthquakes going across the Craton were a coincidence. They said that weather modification was a coincidence. <laughs> they said the poles were a coincidence. They said, let's see, what I mean, we could just keep going on. Everything that I've ever found has always been said to be a chance or coincidence or doesn't exist. Everything. There isn't one thing that I've found that hasn't been dismissed as chance or coincidence. Every single thing in the last 10 years, every week of every month of every year for the last 10 years, everything that I've found has all been said 
to be chance and coincidence. It is a joke. And anybody who's that rudimentary at this point, that childlike in their thinking, doesn't deserve to be listened to. Oh, 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 oh. The hot spots, guys. Hold on a second. These hot spots that I showed yesterday that are all next to the power lines, what did everybody say a couple weeks ago when the hot spots started to show up? Oh, that's right. They said the hot spots were coincidence and that the farmers were just burning their fields. Ah, uh, well, I guess that's changed now, hasn't it? Hasn't it changed now? All of a sudden, the hot spots are not a coincidence anymore. All of a sudden, the hot spots are just such and such, such and such next to the power lines. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, is it still chance and coincidence with the farmer's fields and the hot spots and the earthquakes and the power lines now? That's like four or five layers of coincidence you have to have on top of each other in order to dismiss the earthquakes next to the power lines. It's funny, but it's sad. Let's carry on down here into California. So yesterday I did my updates. We talked about these red colored earthquakes. There's been a development in Northern California. A 4.0 earthquake struck in Napa Valley. But wait, it says 3.4 here, not 4.0 Dutch. What are you talking about? Well, apparently all my viewers saw this last night, con started contacting me about a four that struck in the Napa Valley region. And that matters because I issued a warning this past week for up to 4.9 near 5.0 to strike in Napa Valley. And then it comes in and they do this. Crazy downgrade. Let's go down the list and see what the list is showing. So we got twos on the list. I guess we're going to need to throw out those low end twos. And the people who are reporting the fours were reporting body magnitude, which is even crazier because that's the low ball list. And I'm going down the list and I'm only seeing a few fours on the list. 4.1, 4.0. And I normally throw out the high end and throw out the low end. But again, with them bringing it in at four to start, that's like taking the highest detection on the list and going with that as the original report. It's crazy. Again, my point on this is that it likely was a four something. Now going down the, the station list, how, many, how can this many stations be wrong? That's the question. So there's no way it could just be a three point something. When you got a whole boatload of upper threes and the highest you're going is 4.2, but there's a lot of fours on the list. Why does it matter? Again, if I issue a warning for a 4.9 and a four comes in, that's an earthquake forecast hit. If I issue a warning for a 4.9 to 5 and a 3.4 comes in, that's just a little under what I would consider to be a direct earthquake forecast hit. And USGS is doing everything they can to try and make it so there are no earthquake forecast hits. Did you know that? And I'm not exaggerating. They are literally trying to stop what I'm doing. They're trying to stop the research. I haven't published any books yet or anything, guys. I'm just making videos showing what I'm finding. And they're trying to stop that. Can you imagine what they're going to do when I actually publish my findings? <laughs> Look what they're doing just trying to stop the investigation. Oh my God. It's desperate. So let's go down across the Bay Area. And again, we were talking about these locations yesterday with the advent of the information of the power lines. Let's go down and look at Seven Trees, California. And by the way, the spots that I looked up yesterday were just every location on the entire United States plate being hit in the last two days. That's all. So, you know, I looked up every location and they were all directly next to something. And people tried to tell me it was just chance and that power lines are everywhere. Well, power lines are everywhere. Where are they here? If the, if the clear-cut power lines that are huge high-tension power lines are everywhere, why aren't they here? I mean, again, it can't be. And now up here to the north, there are. Wait a second. Maybe there are. Oh, look, there are. Look, there is. Right here. Look, it comes down right next to the area. Holy crap. There. Goes right over these hilltops. Where's the earthquake? Wow, it really does. And they're not all... Okay, well, let me just prove my... Let me make a, a different point. <laughs> they're not all over the place everywhere, guys. 
they go one per county so like for this one right here this set of high tension power line maybe it's two per county in some but this goes right through the middle of the county and that's where the earthquake is right off next to it you can't tell me they're everywhere they're not here right next to my house <laughs> I mean seriously we can't be that childish in our try to dismissal try to dismiss dismissals that's childish to try and say that there's power lines everywhere for instance out here in the Mojave Desert the earthquake came in and there's a power line that goes out through the desert but there's nothing on either side for 50 miles so while they're striking next to the power lines it doesn't mean there's power lines everywhere that is just the simplistic explanation that you're going to give to yourself to try and dismiss it to walk away from it so you don't have to think about it now let's go down to the south San Lucas California oh and by the way the other stack of earthquakes up here is that geysers which is a power generation station geothermal turbines so that's something else that the people weren't explaining there's nuclear power plants there's geothermal turbines there's wind farms there's solar panel power generation stations like in New York and they're all getting hot spots and getting earthquakes next to them so not only that on the power lines but on these these aren't everywhere but they are where the earthquakes are striking which means that they're tied together somehow now other people are trying to say correlation does not equal causation yeah that's something you tell yourself to try and get out of stuff and just dismiss it that that's what you got it's, it's a convenient it's a convenient way to try and just ignore things they said that about fracking earthquakes too by the way causation does not equal correlation oh the earthquakes that are striking down below the fracking operations that doesn't mean that they're related to the fracking operations you have to prove that they are and you're going to need years worth of study before you try and tell us that they are and I say back to them okay I've already been studying for several years here's the here's the results and what did they do they called me a conspiracy theorist after that so again it's a moving goalpost on people who deny because they're going to say causation does not equal correlation then when you give them years worth of results they're going to try and say well you know there's this is already seismically prone area there were faults here already I mean that's the, the level and I swear it's a type of person that does this it's a mental thing they might learn it at a young age but there's types of people that do this it's like deniers they just live it that's their life so we don't listen to them anymore because they denied everything including fracking earthquake can't take them serious but I am addressing him because man there are some comments left oh man you wouldn't believe it you'd think I was just doing something horrible by showing everybody what I thought was going on now over here to the east at the California Nevada border this little line of earthquakes here between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake well this spot right here in the middle is an electrical generation station geothermal on a volcano so it's another spot where earthquakes are striking let me put the coordinates in and show you I know guys I know hey when you find something that's controversial you can expect everybody to try to deny it and you know why it makes them feel it makes them feel important the people who are denying because they you know they feel stupid for missing it for so long and they can't think of themselves as ignorant or foolish so they try to shame the person who finds the new thing so here are the electrical generation stations here and these are the geothermal turbines that are connected to pipelines and there's the grid outlet on there pretty big and the earthquake epicenter is right here at the top of Sunshine Peak or Sunflower Mountain I'm sorry Sunflower Mountain and we're just east of Mystic what a name but at the top of the mountain I'll just tell you one of my viewers actually went up here to go look through the area because an earthquake swarm started at the power generation stations here at Steamboat Springs and spread over underneath the mountain now uh, there's things on top of the mountain maybe they maybe they have some cell phone towers up on here a lot of people asking me about 5g guys you got more problems than that now I don't know if you know if 5g is just like old at this point 5g is nothing you guys need to understand what's coming next 5g is just a keyword hey guess where else they use 5g for a long time for the last several years have you flown on an airplane and walked through those body scanners where they can see through your clothes into the top layer of your skin kind of see the veins in the top of your skin they can see your whole naked body through your clothes and everything and see any weapons and stuff 
That's millimeter wave technology. Millimeter waves. The same thing as 5G. It's designed to go around your body as opposed to through it. Or around an object as opposed to through it. That you can steer the beam. It's, it's a phased array radar. 5G is working pretty much the same way that HARP works, but it's working on microwave instead of high frequency. So think of HARP with all of its 180 antennas in a grid, and then think of that shrunk down inside of your phone and at the tower, wherever the tower is. And both the phone and the tower have a little grid of an array of antennas. The phone has it on a chip, basically. And they can steer the beam from your phone to the tower and back around things, even in an S shape and a, a very odd shapes, that it can go around objects. And that's what really 5G is. But it's microwave and sort of weak. They don't have them cranked up extreme power because you could talk major, major issues with that. Another entire different video to go on that. But long story short on the 5G, I don't think it's playing into the electrical grid. Electrical grid down at 60 hertz. 5G working in the millions to billions of hertz. 60 hertz, low frequency. That's the electrical grid. Okay, so... I, again, I people, so many people asking me, i got to address it. But the way the chips work is that they're talking to each other and they have beamed, beam bends around things. They use it in the airport to look through your clothes and bends around your body. Okay, Southern California, here we go. <laughs> I got sidetracked. Ah, welcome to the Dutch Sense Labs. Here to talk about earthquakes, end up talking about 5G. It's the way it goes. Let's go search. Where are we going? Going down along the San Andreas in California, but there's something here. There is something here nearby. To the south, to the north. Which way do we want to go? Let's go to the south first. Right down here across this range, see where it says Fillmore. We have an oil pumping operation that crosses the area. Oil and gas. And it goes over to the east, all the way over to Piru, Piru. And it carries on across the fields down to the south. So the drill points are there already. But is there something else here nearby? Do we have any electrical grids or power lines or anything like that that could... Wait a second. We've got Castaic Lake. What do we have at Castaic Lake? Do we have any kind of... Is this like a power generation station at Castaic Lake? You think it would be. Looks like it. Looks like it, but again, I, that's just a guess on my part. I don't know. Let's look it up. Let's find out. Is there anything else here nearby? There's another lake right here. Start to wonder, do they have any power generation? You'd think they would. Again, with hydroelectric, it's hard to pass up that opportunity. I'm looking. I want to know, is there anything there else nearby? I don't see anything else there nearby. We have the oil wells to the south. We have the hydroelectric dams, or at least the dams. Let's go look up and see, does Castaic Lake produce electricity? Because if it does, that's just too weird. Castaic Lake Power Plant. Castaic Lake Power Plant, known as the Castaic Pump Storage Plant, is a seven-unit pump storage hydroelectric plant operated by Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, which provides peak load power from the falling water on the west branch of the California State Aqueduct. There it is. 1,500 megawatts. Nominal. All right, that proves it. 1,500 megawatts, not like it's just small. It's really big, and it's right next to it. And we have maybe another one up here at Pyramid. Oh, py another Pyramid Lake. How many Pyramid Lakes are you going to have? Oh, that's weird. But let's look it up. Does Pyramid Lake have a power generation station?
It's a mirage. It's a mirage. Hydropower proposal at Pyramid Lake is a mirage, according to RGJ.com. How LADWP uses two lakes to store energy. What? No way. Look at this. <laughs> this, this and I find, guys. How LADWP, the Water Authority, uses two lakes to store energy like a giant battery. A set of pipes called the Penstocks bring water 7.5 miles from Pyramid Lake to Castaic Hydroelectric Power Plant in Castaic, California. Transformers and other equipment based on site transfer electricity produced at the site to transmission lines bring the power to Los Angeles for periods of peak demand. Two big lakes into a monster battery capable of storing enough energy to power tens of thousands of homes. It involves using the excess wind and solar power of LA's renewable energy sites producing during the day to pump water from Castaic Lake uphill 7.5 miles to Pyramid Lake. Then, late in the day, when the sun goes down, the city's energy demand spikes, the water gets run downhill through the... So they pump it from one lake up, and then they let it run down at night. Wow. Well, guys, start learning something new every day. Genius. Let's go down to the south, shall we? Let's go down to this 1.7 out of the ocean, off the coast of Malibu. Let's go see what's there. That's too weird. So the earthquakes that are there, do you think it's tied to the water movement? Or do you think it's tied to the oil wells? It can't just be chance. They're doing something like that there. There's Malibu. Okay. We're out here off in the ocean, off the coast of Malibu. There's no power lines here. We have to go many miles over to the east to even get any kind of power line. Now, there are some that go right along here. Huge refineries and storage areas. I don't know what this is, but to me, that looks like a refinery or some kind of power generation station, personally. But it might not be. Only the shadow knows. I'd have to go look it up. Feeling a little lazy. Don't really want to go look it up. It's a 1.7 earthquake. Let's go over to the east. Go pull up the 0.9. Back to Corona. Now, this is a drill point, oil and gas. Are there power lines next to it, too? We have to check. I'm checking each location for power lines in case. This is just proof it's not every... Oh, wait. Dude, hold on. We got a big fire down here. Big hotspot signature. Look at that. Got an earthquake. We've got a next rad radar station is right up here at the top of the hill. So this is high power microwave station there. 750,000 watts or so. And it's got a Klystron that gives it. But look, I mean, this is a big fire here. Fire detection, 596 Kelvin. So what is that? 580 or something? Look at how many centroids are here. 683 Kelvin. So we're starting to get up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go see on Southern California's shortwave infrared view. Go to localized sectors. We're going to go look for an actual fire down here, guys. Down in Southern California. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Dude, it's huge. Hold on. It just started. Look, it just started right there. Two of them. Hold on. There's two of them now. There's one up to the north. This is huge, though. Oh, look, there's another one over here to the east. Hold on, right here. There's three of them in a triangle shape. This is going along the San Andreas. This is the San Andreas right here, going down to Salton Sea. And then down here, well, we've got ourselves an issue going on. A major fire has just broken out here. Santiago Canyon. Look where we are. It's Irvine, California. Here's Long Beach. Here's Southeast LA. All of this is burning right now. And that's several thousand acres. Look how many, look how many houses are right in here. What else is right there? Some kind of quarry? Big quarry right in the middle of it all. But it's a huge hot spot. Let's go look on visible. Let's take a look on the visible view since it's daytime there. 
Oh yeah, you can see the glow even from the fire out on the visible. This is the start this morning, right at sunrise. Look, as soon as sun comes up, right there, soon as sun hits the area, boom. Burning all morning. Wow. Well, what more proof do you need, guys? What more proof do you need? So we have an earthquake right there. An earthquake swarm broke out here. Now we have a hot spot fire outbreak right next to the location. It's at the foot of where the next rad radar is. And we're right next to a quarry to top it all off. I, the only thing missing here is some drill points. That's the only thing missing. Wait, do we have a do we have power generation here too? Because a hydroelectric dam, and you'd think they would, with the other ones. The other ones have it. Why wouldn't they have one at this one? Rattlesnake Reservoir. Yeah. All right, you guys will find out more information on that as this happens throughout the day today. Again, this is right next to our new earthquake epicenter, which is a swarm location that I just talked about two days ago. I even talked about the people who mailed me something from Corona, California for my birthday. Very troubling present that they sent. So now, again, hot spots have appeared directly next to where the earthquake swarm was. And just a couple weeks ago, everybody who was in denial said it was chance and coincidence that the hot spots were popping up along the San Andreas. That's another chance and coincidence. They said it was chance and coincidence on the hot spots on the San Andreas. They said it was chance and coincidence on the beams coming out of space. They said that was an accident, too. The beams out of space were an accident. The hot spots are an accident. The earthquakes are an accident. It's all an accident. Everything's an accident. Heart rings are an accident. Weather modification's an accident. None of this is real. It's all fake. Everything's fake. Well, there we are. I'm not buying. I'm not buying the accident chance, a power lines chance, please. Let's go down here, follow down to the east, southeast, and go see where we go down into the south tip of Salt Sea. Nyland, Neeland, California. This is another power generation station. Another one. Another one. And it's not up for debate. Look where we're zooming in on. Here's the earthquake epicenter. Here's the power generation station. Turbines, pipelines, drill points that go down to steam to bring the steam to the turbines to turn them. And they're all over right here, here, and here. On all sides of where the earthquake outbreak has taken place. Do we have anything else going on down here? Any kind of hot spots showing up? I got to look for hot spots because, well, for instance, what's going on right here, right next to the next ramp? The next rad radar, please. Up here to the north, we have one single hot spot. Do we have any more? We're going up across most of California. Hey, look, here west of the super volcano, it's breaking out again. And it's right next to this, this giant circular lacolith bulge in the plate here, which is next to coarse gold California. And the super volcano on the east side. Let's go up to the north. Do we have any more? We do. We have a hotspot outbreak next to Lake Tahoe. Up to the north in Lake Tahoe. These are hotspots being detected. Heat signatures. So let's go up next to Lake Tahoe. Go see what's going on. Here's Lake Tahoe. And let's turn on our shortwave. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. West of Lake Tahoe, we have a hotspot that's broken out. And it's a fire. It's an actual... Hey, look, it just started this morning, same time as the sun rose. Just like down south. No exaggeration on that either. Hold on, let's get the natural color fire view turned on. There it is. So starting at sun... Oh, look. Hey, there's another couple hot spots flaring up right here, here, and here. As well as the big fires that are going on down at California's border. But they're flaring on and off. Let me turn back on the shortwave so you can see these little black hot spots flaring on and off. This is this morning right as sun is rising. There's last night. There. Wow. Another spot where we have the earthquakes taking place. Because there's no doubt about it. Here, let me go show you. The earthquakes are right there. Right next to Lake Tahoe, we get a hot spot. 
Yesterday we were talking about paradise and the earthquakes next to the power lines there. Napa Valley got hit last night with a 4.0 earthquake or whatever, upper 3 to low 4. This is all happening in real time now as I'm talking, guys. So these hot spots that are flaring up in California now, suddenly they're popping off right in, in the L.A. Basin, right at sunrise. Two of them, one up on the north part of the state, one down south. There. Starts right. First detection is right at 1346.17 UTC. And then the other hot spots that are flaring off, it's in a triangle shape here. Here here and here. Now, why does that matter? Because the triangle shape of the fires is also taking place up north. Lake Tahoe up to the north. And again, I don't know if you're going to see these. These are last night. We have to, we, again, we have to take into account my video from last night. Are there any more? Let's go up into Oregon, see what's going on. Hey, wait, 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 wait. We've got hot spots on the coast in Oregon. Right over here. Let me zoom in on it. That is definitely one. We'll just bring this in current. There. Right there. Right where the shifting is happening. And the plate is shifting. And then it just goes away. Just there. And then poof. Gone. Few hours. Hot spot. Few hundred degrees. Boom. Gone by the morning. Which you know is not going to be some kind of fire in a pine forest. What about up in northern Washington? We have anything going on up here in Washington? This is the most current imagery as of right now, and we do. We've got a couple of hot spots showing up in Washington here and down here in Idaho, but the cloud cover is just major showing through the cloud cover in Washington. That's that black signature, that black little speck of a dot right here where my mouse is. All right, that's worth looking into. So we're going to have to watch this throughout the day. I haven't checked Missouri today, but let's just go see. Is there anything showing on the feeds for Missouri? Nothing. But then again, it's raining thick, heavy rain today. Heavy, heavy rain. Colorado, you guys got snow, which really took care of the fire situation. It's still going. You still got you're still going to have some hot spots up there in Colorado, but that's from the fires now. I don't see anything else going on right now, at least when it comes to hot heat. California is the spot where I'm watching close because of what's going on down there. Again, you cannot ignore. Let me just hit play on this. Here we are last night. You'll see go shut off for a minute. And then watch. Down in Southern California and up in Northern California. You get this triangle of fires down in Southern California as the goes and restarts right here, here, and over here. All three in the South and then up to the North. And watch how they flare off at the same time. Soon as sun starts to come up, you start to see them. Poof, poof, poof. Has to be something. There may be something to that. That doesn't have to be, but there may be something to the photon... Photons of the sun or some other particle of some kind or wave. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. So, rest of the earthquakes. Let's just end this really quick. The earthquakes that have struck across Southern California and the update that I did yesterday showing you the power lines at each location going up the East Coast. These are all things we have to pay attention to going forward, looking to see if there's power lines or drill points or volcanoes at those locations. It's going to take a team of people to review each earthquake to ultimately determine what's at each location. Or it seems like it's going to take a team of people. I can do it. I am doing it. That's what we're doing right now. And let me just show this to you and we'll get out of here after this. For all the people who say, well, you know, there's power lines everywhere and they're feeding people's houses and that's why the earthquakes are striking next the power lines they're just everywhere we go out here in the middle of the desert in the mojave right here and there's only a few spots across the whole mojave where we have power lines that cross the mojave so we have one along the highway there we go halfway down across the mojave desert and you've got one here 
and we go further down to the south and we get down through the Air Force Base and you got one there. Okay, so you got three across the Mojave. And to get an earthquake that strikes right next to the high tension power line, which are right here, out of one of the three, out of the whole Mojave, it's like thousands of square miles here, guys. And with thousands of square miles, to get it down to a couple, couple mile little area right here, here's the high tension power lines, here's the earthquake. It's so not chance. And you're not going to convince me. I don't know if you're trying to convince my viewers or somebody else, but you're not going to convince me. I'm going to keep talking about it, and we're going to keep watching it. But come on, this is a perfect example of where there's no houses, no nothing for miles around, a couple roads and that's it, and then the earthquake striking right next to the to power lines. It's just a good example. There's so many more. They were out in the mountains, right? And then the power generation stations, that just is what seals the deal. The geothermal turbines, the nuclear power plants, the solar farms, like over in New York yesterday, New York gets hit with hot spots. New York gets hit with an earthquake. Zoom in on the hot spots, it's a solar farm. In New York, it's rare. We don't have a lot of solar farms in New York. I'm sure there's a few, but not that many, and certainly not enough to get hot spots and earthquakes. You have to think that that's related. And if you don't, you need to start thinking that it's related, or at least entertain the idea that it could be related. Get out of that funk of denial that's led into stagnation of thought stagnation of thought that's the name of the game apparently but i'm not i'm not i don't do that you're not going to get me to stagnate my thought with denial you might convince a viewer somewhere but that's not going to help now let me remind everybody the earthquakes that are spreading across the plate this all goes back to our deep earthquake activity i do have a few forecasts going for the west pacific and for the United States, we did get fours in a few locations on the West Coast and threes across the rest. That's about a magnitude and a half under what I expected. So if I'm looking for upper fours to fives and instead we get some low-end fours, there's a missing magnitude in there that's going to be coming in. And the plate is still shifting. We know that. The slow slip is still taking place across Vancouver, Washington, Oregon, Northern California. So all that's taking place now. The plate is shifting. We're waiting as the plate shifts for a compensation to occur. And it's pretty obvious. We are compensating up here with all the 4.0 range spreading in a U-shape across the plate boundary going over into Canada. Look at it. It's a huge cluster of fours coming right up to our doorstep. Then you have to add in the four that the USGS ignored, which is right here. Then it really is on our doorstep which then means the west coast of the United States, with all those tremors, stands to reason we're going to break with a new earthquake right in the middle of it. Eureka. And we just got a four. Which, again, the USDS took it down to threes. Now look at it. You can just basically count on these being more like fours. Do you think it's chance that it's three different 3.4s? Three of the exact same sized earthquakes that all overlap on the point that's shifting? Look where all the rings overlap. This is 3.0 and greater. Oh, wait, let me make sure. This is 3.0 and greater. So where all the rings overlap, that's where we're shifting. We get equal sized movement on all three sides of the area going down to the Napa Valley. But I'm going to tell you, these are three fours. And they don't want you to see three fours there because that completes from here down to here. And you see a connection. They can't have that. No, no, no. Can't have that. They said there was no connection. So in order to make themselves appear to be right, they literally have to do a little bit of funny business with the earth put. Eventually, they're going to have to stop because enough people are going to, oh, well, now, now that I'm outing them, they have to. I mean, they keep doing it now. It's like somebody who gets caught stealing you just becomes kind of sad to see him do it, you know? You can just watch him and be like, man, they're doing it again. I'm going to put it into a book, too, so they can't escape it, ever, ever. It's going to be in writing. And let the whole world know what they've been doing. I've already been doing it in video. Everybody already knows, but it needs to be in writing so that they can't escape it. Time now, 2.58 p.m. You are going to develop an emergency kit. You are going to develop an earthquake plan. Your earthquake plan is going to be twofold. One is going to take shelter into your house. The other is going to be in case I have to go out of my house or my business or wherever I'm at at any given time. 
That means you need to have an emergency kit. The emergency kit, if you're out and about, you would probably keep it in your car. It would be a backpack or bag that has certain things in it, change of clothes, set of shoes, water and food for a couple days, sanitation, first aid and the medicines that you might need if you are disabled or you require medicines, a way to charge your mobile phone, flashlight, batteries. Okay, you will take all that and put it into a bag. That's what you need to do. And the bag should cover you not only for earthquakes, but for severe weather, for fire and flood evacuation. You should also make sure to have your appropriate identifications in there, extra ID, or a way to get it. So extra copy of birth certificates and that kind of stuff. So that if you need to get a new ID, you can go do that. An extra debit card, and most people don't have it these days, but extra cash even, if you could. You will come up with better ideas. I'm just getting the ball rolling, getting you going on it. And you will be way better off than 9 out of 10 people around you who don't prepare for anything. They, don't, they think it's like a faux pas, you know, whatever. They'll shame you, actually. I, I get shamed on YouTube, especially on social media, for telling people to be prepared. There's like a whole segment of the population who doesn't want to hear it. And if they hear other people talking about it, they go into outrage mode. Like, how dare you tell people to be prepared? That's scary. That's... And whatever. Those are the people who are going to be going around asking for stuff when it hits the fan. And it will. It always does. I mean, the chances of nothing ever hitting the fan are pretty low, I'm going to have to say. <laughs> okay. I will be back. If anything else goes down, you guys be safe. And like I said, go check out my video from last night. We're going to start doing this on a semi-daily basis, looking up all the earthquakes to see whether or not they're next to the power generation stations and the power lines. VLF, very low frequency, piezoelectric in the crust, coming up out of the crust. It's crazy. Hey, I see Tat's in here. Let's give Tat a shout out for getting this whole ball rolling. When Tat found out that one of the hotspots next to his house was at a power line. Which then led and opened a huge can of worms for me. And now here we are, a week later, and what are we finding? Earthquakes next to the power stations and the power lines. And how did we not see that before? Somebody said, oh, well, this, you know, this is just, it might just be chance that it's happening now. And I go, how do we know it's just happening now? I just started looking now. It may have been happening this way since they put up the dang power lines. Who knows? Who knows? We have to go back and look. Anyway, amazing stuff. Good find, Tat. Your inquisitiveness with your going out to the spot, dude. Well, you know what? Tat's been telling me for years. See, Tat's older than I am, right? It's kind of the unweird, the weird match. He's in the in his 50s, and I'm in my 40s. I'm the young man. I'm the young guy. And he's telling me about stuff from the 1970s and 80s when I was just a kid. About the power lines, for instance. Now, I remember hearing about this when I was a kid. But I didn't know much about it and kind of just shuffled away into the back of my head. But he's telling me in specifics about how there was cancer outbreaks, leukemia outbreaks, all kinds of stuff that I didn't know about on the power lines. And there was a big thing in the 70s and 80s about people in power lines and they had to do some kind of remediation to try and stop this leakage of whatever was causing the radio wave leakage from these power lines. It's crazy. Crazy. All right, guys. I'll be back. And I'm going to save this as a video. We'll watch it back over on YouTube. And, oh, one final thing. If you're watching on Twitch, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching on Twitch. And for those of you who are paying subscribers, thank you for supporting my operation. It makes a big difference. <laughs> it really does. And over on YouTube, thank you to everybody who's been sharing the information. Also on Twitter. But mainly on YouTube, you guys have been doing a phenomenal job of sharing the information out. It's actually making a difference. I know the professionals are getting the message, especially on the power lines. So that's a big deal. The directed energy weapon thing. Thank you to everybody who shared that. You know, it can't be chance that it's directed energy weapons. It can't be chance that the Department of Defense responded. It can't be chance about the hotspots at the power lines. It can't be chance about the earthquakes at the power lines. It can't be chance of the earthquakes at the power generation stations. It cannot be chance on all of those. And you guys have noticed 
And that's what's making the difference in getting the word out. So thank you to everybody there. Please subscribe. You've heard it a million times. You'll hear it a million and one. Please hit the subscribe button wherever you're at so you can get the updates. I'll be back. Peace out.